Now, uh, I'll be talking about uh, ultra-thin DSEC. And can I have my slides on the screen, please? Yeah. So ultra-thin DSEC, if you look at the anterior segment OCT, you can see the differences between DSEC, where the usually donor is 130 to 200 microns. In ultra-thin DSEC, we try to go thinner. <coughs> Ideally, it should be less than 100 microns, but it can range from see 70 that? to 130 microns at the time of implantation. And DMEC, where the isolated transplantation of decimus membrane, it's only about 10 to 15 microns thick. This technique was popularized by Massimo Busin, and he described the double pass technique. And in this, if you compare the outcome of ultra-thin DSEC versus, uh, there is something, Shall I change the connector? Hmm. Yeah. So if you look at the uh, comparison between ultra thin DSEC versus DSEC and DMEC, you will find that the uh, outcomes of ultra thin DSEC are definitely better than DSEC and comparable to DMEC. Uh, the visual acuity between DSEC and ultra thin uh, DSEC are different because the rate of recovery is much faster when you do the ultra thin DSEC. So this is a 49 year old female who had had a complicated cataract surgery presenting with pseudophagic bullous keratopathy. There is some inferior iris tissue loss and was planned for endothelial keratoplasty, wanted to do a DMEC, but the eye bank tissue that we got was an 18-year-old donor, had very good endothelial cell count, so we decided to go ahead and use this for ultra-thin DSEC. So how do you prepare the donor? The double pass technique, so here we use the uh, corneous scleral rim provided by the eye bank, protect the endothelium using viscoelastic, then you mount it on the artificial chamber, after which uh, we perform a we debride the epithelium, perform a pachymetry. You can see it's about 654 because it's stored in MK medium. Tissues are a little swollen. And then we use a 350 micron head to make the initial uh, pass to create the free cap. So this is using, using the Moria SBK microkeratome. That's the anterior cap that's removed. After which we then go ahead and do a pachymetry again and you find that now the reading is showing as 210 microns, and there is a nomogram with which you can go ahead. So I'm using a 90 micron head for the second pass. So ideally from 210, if you use a 90 micron, you should be left behind with about like a 120 micron thickness uh, lenticule. So that's the second pass. Uh, we actually rotate the graph to make the second pass from the opposite side because the initial cut depth is a little deeper and it becomes a little superficial as you go to the opposite end. So that's why you want to reverse so that you can avoid perforation. So there you can see that that's the thin lenticule that's been removed. We do a pachymetry, intra pachymetry again, and we see that our measurement, yeah, there is a little bit of variation. We were attempting a 120, but we ended up with something like 77 microns. Before you go ahead and uh, take off the tissue from the artificial chamber, it's important that you mark the edge of the uh, microkeratome cut. Otherwise, when you are punching from the endothelial side, you can punch a little eccentric, so you will have variable thickness in your donor. It may be very thin on one side and like a full thickness on the other side. So that's the patient's eye, where we debrided the epithelium and did the rest of the steps of surgery the inferior iris loss, so we decided to do a pupiloplasty as well. So you can see that, that we did the pupiloplasty. And then we take the donor tissue from the artificial chamber. We, so we have our peripheral marks that helps us in centration. We also put a F stamp to help identify because unlike the regular DCA graft, an ultra-thin DCA graft is very uh, flimsy. It can flip, it can get flipped over very easily. And before we load it onto the injector, we put a little bit of viscoelastic, do a trifold. If you don't do that and you try to pull it like the regular DSEC graph, it can flip, it can turn curl the other way. So doing a trifold is always easy. That's a Macaluso inserter we are using. You can use any, you can even use a busing glide. The AC maintainer is keeping the chamber form. Using a micro forceps, we pull the graft into the eye. And then once the graft is inside, we secure the wound. 
And now we are trying to see here the graph does not snap open quickly like a DCA graph because it doesn't have too much of stromal volume. So you need to deepen the chamber and do a little bit of tap on the surface and you can make the graph to open up. And because we put a little bit of cohesive viscoelastic on the surface, when you fold the graph, the folds also get stuck in the viscoelastic. So it takes a little time to just get the folds to open up. Once it's opened up, you can go ahead, put an air bubble below the donor disc. So here you can see that I'm going in. And as I put the air bubble within the scroll, it kind of opens up. To move the graft, you need to make the bubble which is slightly smaller than the size of the graft because if you keep a large air bubble, it's difficult to make the graft move because the air bubble pins the graft against the host stroma. Once it is well centered, you can go ahead and you can uh, put in a large air bubble. So that's the post-operative outcome. Even you can see by day four, day five, the cornea is looking extremely clear. It's very thin graft with good endothelial cell count. Uh, this is something that, again, uh, you can prepare that manually as well, where you do the first layer of dissection. After you have done your dissection, you cut at the edges to reflect the cap, and then you can go ahead, make a peripheral group, and do a second layer of manual dissection using the lamellar dissector. So thereby, you can prepare a, a ultra-thin DSEC graft manually also, by doing this uh, double layer dissection. And for insertion, yes, you can uh, insert using the inserter, like what we have shown you here on the Macaluso inserter. You can, it's very good for eyes where the cornea is hazy, where you cannot do a DMAC. An ultra thin DSEC graft is a good alternative, but you can also put in this graft pretty much like what you saw uh, Pratik do, uh, so this is a patient where it had a failed DSEC with the AC IOL which we replaced with a scleral, uh, with a posterior chamber IOL and you can see the ultra thin DSEC graft can also be inserted using the same sliding technique. Uh, you put in your graft on a bed of viscoelastic and then you use a bent needle to just push the graft quickly into the eye. The edges tend to fold a little uh, uh, the, the reverse way because it's very thin you can go on the stromal side and gently netch the folds to open it up. And because it's an ultra thin DSA graph, you can make larger graphs as well. So I have implanted 8.5 or even 9 millimeter because unlike a regular DSA graph, which uh, can have peripheral synechia, here uh, that is not the case. But you do need to measure the corneal th uh, diameter before you de decide the size of the graft. So the advantage of doing an ultra thin DSA graft is that. It uh, has the same surgical principles of a DSEC graft, but the visual outcomes and the risk of graft rejections are much lower, and they take the benefit of DMEC, which uh, uh, Dr. Samar Basak will be talking about in the next presentation. Thank you. Thank you for your patience here.